Allow me to bring your minds to the occasion and the worship for this day. And bring you to the book of John, chapter 13. And we will appreciate a few verses there where John captioned a very important ordinance for the Christian church. Chapter 13 of the book of John. Verse number 10 to 11. But we will consider from verse number 1. Then I will lay emphasis on those two verses. And so allow me to read quickly from verse number 1. And then we will lay emphasis on a few of the verses here. The Bible says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And as supper being ended, the devil, having already put in into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing, that the Father and given all things into his hands, and that he and come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and guarded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was guarded. Verse number six, then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Verse eight, Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash your feet, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, verse number 9, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. The subject for this message is washed, but unclean. Washed, but unclean. Let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in this place and for this message as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You declared, you be lifted up, you shall draw all people unto yourself. Lord, I pray that this morning may I not be seen, may I not be heard. But may you be seen and heard as you speak to us all. My humble request, Father, is that you may put your words into my mouth. And order my leaves and my thoughts to your will, for I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Washed, but, and clean. Now by this time you all appreciate that Jesus had had a very busy, very engaging, very challenging three years experience in his ministry. And just a day, 
away, Jesus will be on the cross. The Bible indicates that it was the time for Passover. And of course, now we can all connect and know this would be the last Passover that Jesus would share on earth. Now the Bible says Jesus then called his disciples to the upper room. And when he gathered them there, the Bible says after they had eaten the supper, Jesus rose from the supper. He lay aside his garment. You see, in the days of Jesus and in the tradition and custom of Jews, whenever they had such kind of high meetings, it was the servant to attend to the master. And so Jesus is sitting as he invited his disciples for a special Passover, and I call it a special Passover because this was only with G disciples. We are appreciate later that Jesus has had not only this Passover in his lifetime, but we all know that every year there was Passover. And so even just looking at the Passover, Passover within the three and a half years of Jesus, then we can conclude Jesus, at least in other two Passovers, he had participated before this. But of course, having in mind that he is brought up in a Jewish family, and especially in the family of Joseph and Mary, there is no way Jesus who not have participated in all the Passovers in his lifetime. Now, at this particular time, Jesus chose to do it differently. He decided to do it only for his disciples. The Bible says he was with them in the upper room. And the Bible says, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, He rose up, lay aside his garment, and he began the job of washing his disciples' feet. Well, you, you would want to have that picture in your mind even as I speak of this, and see them sitting perhaps around the table. There are not so many because they're just that teeny number. I am not very sure of, of all the sitting arrangement looks like. But, but, but the Bible seems to suggest kind of that Peter was on the other extreme end where Jesus was because he seemed to be the last one to be washed his feet. I was asking in my mind, where was Judas seated? And as I was checking through commentaries, I discovered Ellen G. White actually says Judas sat next to Jesus on the right side. And John, the beloved disciple of Jesus, was on the left side immediately after Jesus. Well, I didn't say any other commentary suggesting where other kind of Mark and Mother were placed, but I presume that now then Peter was on the rear end of the sitting arrangement. And so I want you to see Jesus as beginning to wash his disciples' feet and in the manner that Judas has possessed himself, Jesus has to wash Judas, the first guy. And I was wondering why did this happen so? Well, John does not capture any other details of what happened. He, I wish I was John. I would have focused more on Judas. But, but, but for some reason, uh, John chose not to mind about Judas. <laughs> he chose to mind about Peter. Is somebody with me? Uh, Peter, w w when Jesus washes disciples' feet and he comes to Peter, Peter tells Jesus, Thank you, sir. Uh, you can't do this to me. 
I have been sitting and wondering what is happening with Judas? What is happening with John? What is happening with Matthew? What is happening with Matthew? How can they allow themselves to be washed their feet by you? Uh, Jesus, I, I know for sure I, I, I am your servant. I am not supposed to wait that you may wash my feet, but I want to know you need to sit that I may do the job of a servant. Can somebody say amen? Jesus looked at Peter. And I it on Peter. Peter, I understand what you're talking about. I know through customary rights, you are right. Peter, I know that by every measure and standard of traditions of this land, you are within that doctrine. Yet Peter, there is one thing I need you to know today. I am not out of my mind to do the things you see me doing today. You need to understand and ask me, Lord, why have you chosen today to do things in this manner? Are you not afraid that men who turn against you for violating and breaking traditions, but breaking the policies, breaking, you, 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 you know, many times, as we relate with Jesus, we have gathered as a people, most of times we are carried away by policies and procedures and the structures and we miss on the real issues of eternity. Now, Peter was a good guy who did not want to offend the policy of the church. And it was Jesus not with me. But Jesus tells him, listen to me, Peter. How I pray that you will wait on me because what I'm doing you do not understand. But I can assure you, Peter, before the end of this service, you will understand. Can somebody say amen? amen. Jesus told him, if you do not allow me to do this today, then you have no part with me. You do not share any part. With me. Now, when Peter had this, Peter knew something is wrong. And he said, Jesus, I, you, you, I didn't see it that way. Now, then Jesus, here I am. Now, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And, and you know, the, the, Peter is always a very smart guy. You see, when Peter had Jesus saying, you will love to allow me to do this so that you can understand what I'm doing. And when Jesus mentioned, if I don't do this to you, you have no fellowship or part with me, Peter knew he stood on the way of his salvation. Peter knew he was risking to miss out in eternal life. And he told him, now I remember something, my master. Now you see, when priests were being inaugurated, to begin their ministry, to enter into the sanctuary and begin their ministry, they were washed. Are you with me? And the priests were washed. They were brought to the sanctuary. And the priest, any new appointed priest to begin his ministry, he was washed in the sanctuary and he was washed on his feet his hands and on his head. Can you say amen? Peter says, no, Jesus, I've remembered. You value me so much. You want to make me a priest. Then Jesus, not just feet like Matthew, not just feet like John or like Judas. No, for me, mine is that for the priest. Do it on my head, on my hands, and on my feet. Uh, Jesus looks at him and tells him, you have gone overboard. You are still missing the point. It has nothing to do with your ministry. It has nothing. I, Peter, I am not choosing you to be the priest over your other disciples. That is not the point. You, you, you see, Ellen G. White says, as they were walking into the upper room, the disciples were engrossed in controversies of who is the greatest among us. Who should sit where in this table? 
We have heard Jesus saying that he is in his very last days. Then who shall he leave in charge of the flock? Now, this is going on in the minds of disciples. Jesus is silent, but because Jesus was also God, he had the power to read their minds. Now, Peter, and no wonder, by the way, I agree with Ellen G. White. Why Judas? <laughs> because there was a controversy of who is important in the kingdom of Jesus. No wonder G Judas chose to possession himself right at the right side of Jesus. The controversy of supremacy. The controversy of who gets what. The controversy of who is superior and who is least was in the mind. Now maybe also as Jesus invited them for Passover, they knew that, you know, every time when there were Passovers, you know, like, like today we are having here, you have all come. But I can tell you here, we have had a team of deacons, the deaconesses, when you were busy at your workplace and your homes, they came here to prepare for you. Are you with me? They came and made the emblems. They spent their time here. So even in those days when the principle was being made, there were people who were chosen to serve. And part of the people who were chosen to serve were the lowest people, the least people in the society. They were picked that they may be servants and wash every other people's feet. So in every Passover, there were people assigned, you, are, you know who you are in the society. So this is your job. So and in all the Passovers, the disciples have celebrated with Jesus. I want to imagine that they had never seen any Passover where there were no prior arrangement of who is going to wash their feet. How comes that today... Peter is resisting, is complaining, yet he had been with Jesus in all those other Passovers. It simply means there were prior arrangement on to who is going to be the servant for the occasion. Are you with me? But on this one, they are alone in the room. And as they walked in, they looked from this side and from that side. There was no servant. There was no one who would be lower than each other. They were just there and they sat and the controversy was becoming more and more. And so what is going to happen? Who is going to wash our feet today? And I can imagine Peter thinking through, am I going to wash the feet of Judas? I want to imagine Matthew asking, am I going to wash the feet of Mark? This fearful fellow, how can I do that? Rest that become lower than Mark. The Controversy is real. Jesus is looking at them. And the Bible says, Jesus, knowing the hour. Can somebody say amen? Jesus, knowing the hour, he rose from the supper. He lay aside his garment. He walked where the basin was. He poured the water into the basin. And he, he guarded his, his waist with a towel. Their disciples are watching and they start washing their feet. They are silent. When it comes to Peter, then Peter says, this is not our tradition. Let me speak to somebody here this morning. And I say, there are times that you have to break your traditions. Can somebody say amen? Mm-hmm. There are times in your Christian life, you must allow yourself for the sake of eternity to break away from your culture, from your traditions, from your customs, because some of the traditions are contrary to the spirit of eternity. There are times when you need to lay aside those things that beset you and that stops you on your way and you must be willing to pay the penalty. You see, Simon Peter says, you know, Jesus, for us to fit in the society, we must observe the ritual in its dictates. But I hear Jesus telling Peter, this 
is not a ritual for acceptance. This Peter is not a ritual for a mere service. This is a ritual that cleanses the soul. You see, Peter, this one is not that one for the lower. This one is for the upper. This one is not the one that is reaching to the outer part of you. But this, what I'm doing today, is the one that reaches to the innermost of you. Oh, these the past of us should have been having, it has been addressing the outer of you. But Peter, today, this one is all, all targeted to minister to the inner being of you. And for this reason, the inner is important than outside. If the inner cause for breaking tradition may be so. I remember Jesus teaching somewhere and saying, it is good for you then, even though it will mean for you to go to heaven without some part of your body, fine. Jesus is not only today teaching against the things that are a stumbling block in our journey with him, but he is demonstrating. But yes, it is possible when you have come to me. And so Jesus tells him, you see, those who are bathed in the morning, they are clean. So, Peter, there's no need for me to wash you the, hand, the hands. But, but let me just do this because today this is a special one and you've got to get the significance of it. You see, Peter, why asking me to wash your hand and your feet and you washed in the morning? Have you not come here when you're clean? I am here this morning, or the, rather this evening, to remove the dust that may have settled on your feet while you are on your way coming here. Can somebody say amen? I called you, Peter. I removed you from the world. You left everything for me. I remember one day you challenged me, Jesus for us who have left everything, our wives, our children, our business came to you. What shall we get? Peter, I am doing this today because it has nothing to do with the outside. It has nothing to do with physical. It has nothing to do with every ritual. This is an heavenly ritual. You see, people... And their lives can look really very good on the outside. But they are well, can be very well mannered. They can go to church. They can give generous offering. They can sing and go out for missions. They appear to be very clean and good. Yet on the inside, they are filled. Some of those who those same people are filled with extreme pride in how they appear. Some may have hateful thoughts about others. Some be holding on a grudge against someone else, refusing to forgive. Yet they are on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, coming before the Lord and fellowshipping with the Lord. They pray and God answers their prayer. But from inside, they are not clean. And so, like most of us today who are going to participate in the Holy Communion, we have all been washed by the blood of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? We accepted him. We were taken to the waters of baptism. We were cleansed. We came our new beings. But I want to let you know today, even though that happened, we are not clean. Jesus says, I know, since the day you were baptized, you began your life with me. You were never isolated from the chaos of this life. You never went to live in heaven. You're living in a sinful world. And many things have come your way. They are choking you. You are contaminated as you come to me on this special ordinance. I want you to know, I know inside of you, you are not clean, but I am here to clean you. I am here to give you the touch that you desire that your heart and my heart can be in harmony. I'm here today. 
recognizing that you bathe in the morning, that I may give you a bathing of the soul. And all of Peter says, Jesus tells Peter, Peter, look at this. So Jesus has finished washing the, the, the disciples' feet. And I want you to behold here and see. Imagine <laughs> how I wish I was there. If Jesus washes your feet, <laughs> uh, if Jesus washes, just, just touching your feet, Jesus, the hands of God himself touching your feet and taking water and cleaning you and cleaning you and cleaning you with the creator's eye, cleaning you with a redeemer's eye. Who do you go out of that place with any trait of that? I want to see the feet of disciples. Jesus has completed and washing their feet. And I believe they were looking at each other. They were saying, oh, this was a good deal today. We have, been, we have never been clean like this before. There is a special cleaning of the hands of the master. Today we look more handsome. We look more beautiful. We feel more fulfilled. And Jesus could see their heart and the emotion and their feeling. And you know, he never reprimanded Judas for sitting next to him. He was never bothered with where, who sits where. Now Judas is spreading his legs there together with Matthew and John and Mark. His feet has been washed. But the Bible Bible says, before Jesus began to do this servant job of washing their feet, already Satan and he entered into Judah's heart. Are you with me? As Jesus is stooping down to, be, to, to start washing Judah's feet, Jesus is very clear, I am not washing my friend, I'm washing my enemy. Hmm. Jesus He's very clear. I am not washing a companion. I am washing a traitor. Jesus knew few minutes after this, Judas will leave their company and go to look for the temple man. Jesus knew in the next few minutes coming, Judas would come and kiss him and hand him over to his kidders. Jesus knew few hours after that, the act of Judas would take him through the throughout the night he would be persecuted. Jesus knew after this act of G Judas he would be put on the cross. Yet Jesus washed his feet. I don't know who you perceive what today in this church. I don't know who in deep of your heart you say, this one, even though we come to this church together, I know this one is not my friend. This one stabbed me on the back. This one is my enemy over my dead body, pastor. I can't wash their feet. Jesus says, that's why I did not organize for the washers. Is that the English? You see, friends, the reason why Jesus has behaved this way is very surprising to me. And I'm asking, how can this be possible? How could Jesus do such kind of a thing? Hmm. And so I saw in verse number one, Verse number one, the Bible says, read with me, how could Jesus endure a washing his enemy's feet? The Bible says, not before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart. When Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to depart. When Jesus knew his hour and come, he had to do things differently.
differently. When Jesus knew the hour is here when I am leaving the earth and go back to my father. When Jesus knew that this is the time. He changed how people looked at life. Can somebody say amen? And I'm asking you this morning, do you know what hour it is in your life? As you came here today for this Holy Communion, do you know what time we are living in today? You see, what makes Jesus today behave in this Passover, the way he's behaving, the reason why Jesus in the first Passover, when he is taken by his mother, he did not behave this way. The reason why when Jesus was chasing people in the temple, he did not behave this way is because he knew his hour has not come. But now he says, having known that his hour has come. How does the knowledge of what time is you're living in today change your approach to the things of eternity? When he knew, the Bible says he rose from the supper. He rose from the feast. He rose from the supper and laid aside his garment. When Jesus knew the time the hour he was living in, he rose from the feast. And I'm suggesting to somebody this morning, it is time for you because I am very certain that we are living on the edge of eternity. This is a time for you to rise from your supper. Rise from the feast. Rise from the comfort zone. Rise from the place where you are esteemed. Rise from the place where you feel powerful. Rise from the place where you feel it is easy for you. Rise from the place where everyone is applauding you. Rise from the supper. For this is not time for supper. It is time to fix issues eternity. There's no time to celebrate life and enjoy life. This is a time to work out your salvation in fear and in trembling. There's no time to linger anymore in the tree of your things of this world. We're talking about that and this and this. And many times we are wasting time for very precious time. Jesus is teaching me this morning. In such an hour like this, I should arise from a comfort zone. I don't know what is a comfort zone. But supper, that dinner was indeed a comfort zone. Something to celebrate. But Jesus said, where well, our disciples were enjoying that moment of sitting and enjoying and eating, Jesus rose from that seat. Let me speak to somebody this morning, friends. I say it is time for you and me to rise from the status quo. <laughs> it is time for us today to rise from traditions and practices that have always derailed the mission of Jesus. For he says, I stand at the door. I am coming quickly. It is no time for us to linger on earthly things. It is time that Paul will speak in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 4. Set your heart on the things above where Christ is sitting and the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things. If you realize the time and the hour we are living in today, you will have no time for the earthly things. I thought somebody would say amen. This is the time to ask Jesus, how do I fix the issue of my eternity? You see, when we know that the hour that we have is the last hour to determine our destiny in the Lord, then we will be more carefully minded. I was thinking from LNG when she says, the team was lost in the pursuit for the other game. And Jesus is going to fix it. I thank God that all of all the twelve, the eleven got it right. Can somebody say amen? I think this is one of the most successful stories of the ministry of Jesus. When out of 12, he only lost one. So if out of my ministry, I lose 10. <laughs> There's somebody with me. So, I mean, Jesus, to me, this was a very successful ministry. But you see what? Of the one who is, Jesus says, uh, uh, you, are, you, you are clean, but not Oh. And just then ask myself, how could be somebody who has been cleaned by Jesus still remain unclean? And 
then I discovered that even as much as Jesus is working day and night to give us eternity, even as Jesus died on the cross for our sin, Jesus will never and never and never rob your heart. Jesus is always waiting for you to volunteer your heart to him. The difference between Peter and Judas is that when Peter discovered what Jesus was doing, he volunteered his heart to Jesus. And because he volunteered his heart to Jesus, even when Peter behaved in all the ugly money he behaved, Peter remained a friend of Jesus. But because Judas never surrendered his heart to Jesus, today Judas is still unclean. Even though Judas was received the same service like Mark and John and Matthew, even though all the disciples were clean by Jesus and they were left clean, Judas was left unclean. Let me, let me, let me end this message by saying something here, my friends. You see, the Bible says, Jesus, he removed, he rose and removed his garments. Hmm. You see, Judas always wore the garment of a thief. <laughs> Uh, Judas, every time as he's walking, and this is what Jesus was struggling with. And Judas said, how can I do? I already have a deal. <laughs> After this, I'm going to receive. I meant some connections. I meant some phone because I know there is a deal in Iva. There's something quickly coming through. How can I lose it for this mere washing of the feet? Just wash them. I know where I'm going. And Judas for the interest of few coins, he missed eternity. What is going to make you miss eternity? I figured out today that it was not something so big. The 30 silvers that Judas was given, honestly, it was not too big for him. I have figured out that most people are going to perish and to miss out in the kingdom of God, not because of many great sins they have committed, but because of small petty things they are living in. And I'm speaking to somebody today, I don't know who that person is. You know that pettiness of your Christian journey. You know those things that you trivialize every time. You know that thing that you think is not a big thing. I know a sister here who is messed up. I, I am better than that sister. I'm better than that brother. I am not as wicked as that man. I'm not as wicked as that. Have you ever heard of any story of me breaking somebody's home? I, I am just, I'm just doing some little things because of my human. That is where Judas was. And because of just little things of 30 coins of silver, he missed in eternity. Could you be washed, but still unclean? And what do you want Jesus to do? And I hear today somebody saying, like Peter, Jesus, not just the feet, but also the hands. Can somebody say amen? Jesus, not just the feet, but also the hand. In other words, Peter saying, Jesus, take my life and let it be. Can somebody say amen? Take my life, Jesus, and let it be consecrated to thee. Jesus, take my head, take my hands, take my legs, take my mouth, take my head. It is thine, O Lord. Consecrate it. Clean it for what is the word of me sharing with you. Their special ordinance. Share to know I am not unclean. Cleanse me, O Father, David says, creating me a new heart. David never meant remove this heart. Take me to hospital and do a heart transplant. No, David is saying, Jesus, I have surrendered to you. Can somebody say amen? I have subjected myself to your will. Let your will be done in my life. And this morning, this morning, I want to pray with somebody who says, I need to be worse, and I'm inviting choristers here. Because I want us to sing the song, Have You Been 
to Jesus for the cleansing. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lord? Have you been washed? Have you experienced the washing that it comes from the blood of Jesus? I am informed very well that the blood of Jesus is able and powerful to remove every stain of sin. Can somebody say amen? This morning, you may have walked out throughout the week into dirty corners of life. You may have indulged yourself in an acceptable behavior. This morning, my question is, have you tried the washing of the blood of Jesus? Have you been washed in his blood? He is right here with us, and we want to wash you and release you. Please do not resist him. Do not be a Judas. Be a Peter and say, I have come to receive the washing of the blood. Chorus has given us that song, Have You Been Washed in His Blood?